What's up, everybody? <laughs> Feels good here today. I like this. Brett, I have to say, I feel underdressed. <laughs> I always wear this. Every day I Every sleep day. in this. This is just what I always wear. It seems so like you've definitely been wearing it since Glow came out. Are yes. you enjoying dressing up every day? I love to wear suits, okay. tuxes, anything. If I can dress up, I'll, I'll take the opportunity. Uh, my grandfather always told me, dress to impress. And so I try to. I, I like to wear sweatpants and, and, and tw uh, all that stuff, but. This is cool. This is the real Brett. This is me. I like that. So let's go back. Glow is obviously out now. It's a yeah. beautiful, big band holiday album. Mm. But go, take me back to when you wanted to do it. How long has this been in the works or sort of <laughs> your goal? I, I remember my, my father played uh, the tape of Bing Crosby, White Christmas as a kid in, in the car. And I remember, I remember the exact place, driving on the exact road the first time I heard Bing Crosby yeah. sing that. And I was, I was just hooked by the the warmth of this of his voice and and the nostalgia of that music is just so special and and so I I grew a love for you know that crooner type of, right. of, of Christmas songs the way that I feel like Christmas songs should be done you know in that, right. that classic vibe so I wanted I said one day my dream is to make a classic Chris, Christmas album and it, that's exactly what we did so it was a dream come true so you obviously did not record this during a Christmas season though the last time I saw you it was <laughs> yeah you're right and very warm what did yeah. you do to get in the spirit to sort of feel Christmas it was the middle of May and it was so hot in New York <laughs> you know I was uh, so I, I I would I would wear I would wear a suit to the <laughs> studio I would I would get up early I'd go to the gym I'd go straight to the studio I'd, I'd pour a little bit of whiskey in a glass, got my suit on with the lights in the studio, and I would be, I'd be in in Christmas mode in May, and it was, so it's been Christmas for me, a for, long time for like six, <laughs> seven months now, and I'm, I, I, I wouldn't change it for the world. I love that feeling. Um, I know you said it was important to you to do this in New York. Why did you want to record here? You know, the, some of the most classic jazz music and big band music has been made and lives right here in New York City, so. It was a no-brainer for me. I mean, this is where I feel Christmas music should be made, and where it, it just it, where it lives, and and uh, and so it was it was such a magical experience. I, I got to be a New Yorker for a week and really experience that, and you know, a kid from Paris, Illinois, doing that. It was just it was mind blowing. It was awesome. It's got to be nice to be back now when all the Christmas lights are actually yeah. outside on the block. Yeah, man. I've, I I uh, I've been listening to my album because I. Because I've never really got to listen to it much as much as I'd like because I've been out promoting it. Right. So now I'm like, I, I, like I decorated the tree the other day with my, my family listening to Glow. And usually <laughs> I don't, it kind of weirds me out listening to my music. Right. But we always said there'll be a day where we can actually listen to one of my Christmas albums instead of the other ones. So we did that, and I've been listening to Christmas music this whole week as I'm walking around, you know, outside Saks Fifth Avenue with the, right. all the crazy stuff going out there and just Christmas everywhere. It's beautiful. You also get to bring a lot of Christmas cheer sort of to people on this press tour. Where has yeah. been sort of the most rewarding experience to perform? Oh, man. I've, I've done a lot of different things. I That that special in Vegas was, right. uh, y'all just saw a little clip of that. It was amazing because, you know, big band, kind of Rat Pack vibe, actually the same right. place, the same stage that Dean Martin used to sing at and, and the Rat Pack sang at. And so all my heroes on that stage, I got to sing on that stage with that vibe of music, with that swing and uh, right. and and sip on whiskey and, and be, you know, a Vegas guy. And it was it was my element for sure. I was I was in my element. I'm noticing a theme of whiskey with this. Yeah, project. yeah. It did, <laughs> I don't know. It's like whiskey always goes well with Christmas music. Totally. I'm always so there was whiskey. I, I might have just had some. I don't know. <laughs> and I'm celebrating the holidays now. I'm all. This is like, this is my last one of my last days of work right here. And go. this is doesn't feel like work. So, um, we've mentioned Bing Crosby now, Dean Martin, the Rat Pack. Obviously, Frank Sinatra is a huge influence for you. Would you consider making a non-Christmas album in this type of singing and pr production? Oh, it's a, it's always been a dream of mine to do that. Um, I don't know how soon or when I would. Right. I mean, you know, first and foremost, I'm a country singer. That I love that. And this was, you know. This is, I, w I could not do this record because it's such a huge part of me and right. such a huge influence on my music, whether my music doesn't always sound like that. I get a lot of my phrasing and a lot of the way I relate to songs through this big band music. And so I think it'll be natural to one day 
have fun and record a record like this and and how soon i don't know but i want to do everything i don't want to be <laughs> one of those artists that just is a one trick pony that can only say you know you can only sing just this it's like right. if you love music great music is great music and i want to sing everything i'd love to do a blues record i'd love to do you know all these different things there's no reason why you shouldn't try it all you know it's art yeah i look forward to it um can we assume that Christmas is your favorite holiday, or should we expect a Halloween album, something else great? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I was talking to somebody the other day. I, I love um, all, all holidays. I mean, I'm a big Fourth of July guy. I'm a kind of a pyro. I love to light off fireworks. <laughs> right. Um, uh, but, yeah, you can't beat Christmas. I don't know. It's just I've always said, you know, if there's if there's magic in the world, it's at Christmas time. Totally. There's just a, there's a, there's a magic to it. There's a there's a sense of when everything is crazy in the world there's a sense of everything is okay when i hear christmas music okay. it's like and so i go to that every time and, and no other holiday can do that for me like quite like christmas does what is your favorite tradition from growing up or even now um i think that i love i love i love the whole process of getting in the car and and you know off of a tour bus not an airplane getting in a car loading it up in the back seat, my brother and I riding home to see my family, where we can't even move in the back seat because there's like <laughs> presents, and you know now I've got a puppy, so I have him in the back seat, and like all this stuff. I love this, you know, piling everybody in there and 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 doing it how we've always done it, and just traveling, you know, cross country. That's awesome. There's a lot of people watching right now. Yes. Would you like to share your Christmas list with anyone? Yeah. <laughs> I can never figure out what I want. Let me think. Uh, I'm sure my mom's watching, and I haven't told her what I want, so. Now would uh, be a good time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what I want. I just, uh, I always default to socks because I lose socks all the time. Very practical of you. It's, I just, oh, my mom was like, I don't know, just give me. She's like, what do you want? It's so hard to know what you would want. I said, just give me socks. You'll always be happy with socks because I'll always lose them. Or, uh, you know, workout clothes. I don't know. I don't, I don't. You're going to start getting a lot of fan mail of socks. Yes. By the way. <laughs> you know, I used to talk about how my favorite food was peanut butter. I get peanut butter given to me almost every day <laughs> of the week. So, That's a good money So saver. I'm always like, and then I said something about Ninja Turtles one day. The next thing I know, I have like, you know, four Donatello outfits right. and a Leonardo mask and stuff. It's like, it's uh, it, but it's awesome. I love my fans. And, and uh, I think I just, you know, I'm, I'm just loving the fact that I've got to make this record. And that was a huge right. Christmas gift right there. So I'm, I'm awesome. happy with where I'm at right here. I like that. Um, on the record, you duet with Megan Trainer on Baby It's Cold Outside. Yeah. Tell me about pairing up with her. Oh, man. Megan Trainer. have you met Megan? Yes. She is, a, she is amazing. She is obviously an amazing voice. Very, she's a very unique voice. It's her own thing. It's her own style. And, and, and for this kind of music or, or pop or whatever it is, she can fit into anything. Because right. her voice is just, it's got so much soul and mm -hmm. it's got so much energy. Like, I... I can't help but smile when I'm talking to her, and and uh, her, just the playfulness of this song, she she fit it perfect. Right. So going back to May, you're in a record studio covered with Christmas lights, singing yeah. Christmas songs, and then you head out on the road with Keith Urban for a yes. big summer tour. What was it like balancing that in your brain? <sighs> you know, I was, it was crazy because I'm, you know, promote you're promoting two things right. at one time. It's like okay, here I am, want to be that song. This is been one of my biggest songs on my career so far right. but also this Christmas record that I got to promote too and I want to sing Christmas right. and I want to sing <laughs> this and so I'm just like mixing it all in there and and uh but that's cool though I, yeah. I want to be able to do all that so it's it's been interesting but it's it's been very rewarding and, and and cool to see that my fans you know didn't even flinch at the fact that I recorded right. a, a big band swing record and they also were sitting there calling and buying and requesting you know my album Illinois and request and want to be that song you know that so they're they're taking it all in and, and that's all I could ask for is having that is everybody just wanting to hear my music that's that's what I want that's awesome um something you're doing on social right now is the 12 days of Brettmas <laughs> yeah can you tell us yeah. what that is um <laughs> well uh, for those that don't know me that well I am a very uh random person I like to make very crazy videos of so my best friend Greg um, also, my guitar player, he and I always dress up in random outfits. Sometimes we'll throw on wigs and go in the crowd. And f after we're singing in front of 30,000 people, right. we'll go out in the crowd 
with wigs on and 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 dance with the fans. Like one time we, <laughs> one time we put the wigs on, and we went out and we danced to this lady that there's like a whole group of girls that had my T-shirt on, and I was acting like some weirdo drunk guy, and I had <laughs> these like long like curly dreads and and uh, and I and I was dancing. And they're like it's so creeped out by me, <laughs> and they and they were like huge fans of mine, and they had no idea, and so I loved it. <laughs> so we've always had the love for doing that stuff. Right. So. I started make we made this 12 days of Brettness Brettness where it's where it's 12 days of just videos of you know he and I he's my aunt Janice and he's this quirky right. aunt of mine and we're trying a cooking show right. and it's literally the worst cooking show you've ever seen and it doesn't make sense at all we're putting like sprinkles on a turkey and right. and uh, and just dumb stuff but it's it's fun it's I love to make people laugh it it it, it is another kind of performing for me to act and, and right. to do that kind of stuff. So um, to be able to to remind people to not take life too serious and, and just have fun around the holidays and, and all the time, that's that's my, my mantra. So I just I try to stick to that. Do you have any goals to act in, like, TV stuff, movie stuff? Absolutely. Okay. I'm, I'm like, I am ready. <laughs> yeah. I'm ready. Let's go right now. I, w- I would love to. Yeah, I've always I've always had a dream to do that, and, and I think, here before too long, I'll slow. I mean, music's always my first, right. first love. But if I can acquire all that, put it all together, um, I think it would be pretty special to to do both. So along with the cooking show, you and Greg slash Janice have also yeah. stuck his tongue to a pole. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. A Christmas story. I wonder if you can preview anything coming down the line for Twelve Days. Yeah, let's see. I've got. Oh, okay. I've got uh, coming down the line for Twelve Days. I've got one more cooking show uh, where we make. Uh, What's the other thing we make? I can't remember. Um, there's so many. Good, you know, we already made the pigs in a blanket. Right. And we made the turkey. And uh, cookies. Right. <laughs> we made cookies. Naturally, Christmas and, cookies. And uh, Christmas cookies. But they are, I don't even know how to explain it. You have to watch it. And we start singing. We start making up songs on the spot. I, li- I don't like working with the script. So the more right. it can be random. And we just start riffing off this, r- just being complete idiots. We mostly laugh the whole time. And they find the clips where we're not laughing. Right. <laughs> Use and, uh, those. I like that. Um, social media is pretty big for you in general. You know, you've got a big Snapchat following, mm-hmm. big on Instagram. What is your number one social media etiquette rule? <sighs> I don't think I have any rules. <laughs> I, I just, I think that's the main thing for me is being as real as possible and right. just, I I can't stand when people try to be super cool. I'm not, I'm, I'm not trying to be cool ever. I just want to be. I just want to be me and goof right. off, and and I've been very fortunate. My fans let me be me, and 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 uh, I just chase that down. I just have fun, and I I take I've I've literally taken my Snapchat um, go karting at a go kart track right. and ran my phone over and crushed that phone. I've dropped it in a lake, right. filming fishing. I've he's doing it for you guys. Yeah, I do. Like I, I want to take everybody along for the ride because right. it's such a unique lifestyle, and it's and it's and it's. And it's it's like having your family along with you with, when you get right. to share it. And so it really is a, it's something that I just I love to share. And so I, I don't think I have a lot of rules just other than just just having fun. I like that. Um, another crazy thing you've got going on, you're joining the Luke Bryan's Kill the Lights Tour in 2017. Yes. Yes. A lot of big rooms, a lot of big dates. What are you most looking forward to there? I can't wait to play the Garden. Yeah. I saw the other day that that sold out. That's March 1st, um, I think. He's yeah. back in New York. Yeah, what's up? I'm coming back here. Yeah. <laughs> I've been... I've always wanted to play that. I've, I've seen, I saw Carol King and James Taylor there. I've seen, right. you know, I've seen some great shows there, but I've never got to play there. And, you know, we're gonna bring it. We're gonna bring it to New York. So I'm, awesome. I'm ready. And and Luke's a great guy, and I've known him for a long time. So it's, it's gonna be a fun, sh- it's gonna be a fun tour. At this point, you've opened for Taylor Swift, Keith Urban, Luke, or about to be Luke, Darius Rucker. Who has the craziest fans? Oh man. Everybody has different style of fans. That's what I love about it. Um, I mean, of course, Taylor's fans are out of this world. Right. Um, and that was really one of your bit. first big tours. Yeah, that's, that, yeah, had that was been sort of. That was right before Don't You Hit. Right. It was like when Don't You was out, and it kind of helped launch me right. as an artist. Um, and I was singing with just like acoustic, like two acoustics in it. Right. <laughs> but I was in front of you know sometimes fifty thousand people in stadiums and stuff, and so it was a great opportunity and. So Taylor's fans, I think, are so connected. She is, yeah. she has a way of of connecting with her fans that is just so unique and so, so real. And I mean, they, she makes everybody feel part of the ride, right. and I love that. And she treats them really well. So I, 
she's definitely got some of the, the most diehard fans. That's awesome. You've obviously been playing enormous rooms now for a couple of years. Did it change the way you write music or your goals for your music? It can. I try not to let it, though, because... Yeah. And it's like, oh, you need this arena rock song, you know, to do that. It's like, that's not me. It's just, um, yeah, it'd be nice to have, like, you know, you know, this certain song that's, that, that's kind of like a fun dancing part of the show or right. something. But for me, it's like, I just want to write really great songs, and I'll find a way to fit them in a show. And if I can, if I can make people believe whatever I'm singing, if it's like, if, it, if, if I can believe it myself, I can, I can sell it. You know, I can, I can get people to believe it because I, I am believing. I am telling that story. And so... That's my main thing is just writing the best songs that I can and uh, being me up there on stage and, and letting the, you know, the rest do the work. You've had a number of songs do extremely well on Country Airplay and even mm -hmm. on the Billboard Hot 100. What is your biggest song live right now? Ooh. Well, currently want to be that song probably because it's right. somewhere towards the top of the chart. I don't know where it is, <laughs> but it's, I don't want to jinx it. It's somewhere. It's, it's, it's climbing. It's good not to have that memorized. It's it? climbing <laughs> very, very high. And, I, and so, I mean... But it's crazy because then I'll play Don't You, which was my very first number one. Right. Um, and people go crazy for that. And that was 2012 or 13. Right. So um, I don't know. But I, I'd say want to be that song right now is, is, is a big one. That's awesome. Um, and obviously, I know we have Glow Out. But are you working on a follow-up to Illinois? Or are you writing? Yeah. Or are you? I might even be recording for it like next week. I don't know. <laughs> so. Yeah, I uh, I'm always recording though. I'm always writing because I'm, um, I can't stop. I just yeah. it's like a, it's a drug for me. It's like a, it is a it is the most unique thing to create music and to walk in a room and uh, like I wrote the song Glow for this album. Um, dr uh, I was driving along in my car and I hit the voice memo, right. and uh, I just had this melody and I kept singing it. You look good in the light of my Christmas right. tree, you know, and I was. And I just started having it. I just kept, kept going with it, kept going with it. And the next thing you know, I, I had a whole voice memo. And uh, I stopped on the side of the road, and I sent it to my buddy. And I said, I'm heading over. Get, out, get to your, your grand piano. Right. We're going we're gonna to write this thing right now. And, uh, and it was done in like an hour and a half. How often is that the case where you're just somewhere in public and you need to, like, go spend some time singing to your phone? Um. <laughs> <laughs> Very romantic I'm always right singing to my phone. <laughs> Here's the trick is you've got to back up your phone. Right, yes. You lose, I've, I've lost, I swear, 60 number ones, you know, or at least <laughs> I could say that because no one over here. But, right. but uh, yeah, you have to remember to back them up, and you gotta, um, you, and you got to be able to listen to yourself sound terrible at times because you're just, like, mumbling stuff in your phone. And I... I never save, like, what the title of it is sometimes, so I have to sit there and listen to myself, like, breathing or something, or, <laughs> right. or like, I forget to turn out the recording, and I'm walking in the mall or something, and just, you know, just right. whatever, but it's always, I'm always getting random spurts of, of inspiration, I mean, I could just be standing backstage, and for whatever reason, like, when I were, when I got the idea for Want to Be That Song, I was about to walk on stage at a racetrack, and I, I was told to my buddy, um, I said, I want to write a song called I Want to Be That Song about, you know, the feeling you get when you, when, you know, that feeling you get when you hear a song that you love so much that it takes you back to right. a special place. I want to be that song for someone. And then I walked on stage, and we didn't write that song for another three months. He came in the room. He's right. like, remember that idea you had? And so oh, wow. it's like, and so you never know which ideas are going to end up being something that, you know, I was, I saw a policeman on the street today, um, this morning when I was, when I was doing a TV spot, and I, he said, uh, I'm getting, uh, one of my favorite songs, and my girlfriend and I is, is want to be that song. Oh, how nice. And, uh, and it was just so cool. It was like, that was just a random, you know, piece of inspiration one day at a racetrack, and then it turns into something that's part of somebody's relationship in their lives, and, and that's why I write music. That's why, I, that's why I do this. That's awesome. Um, and now we're going to take some questions from the fans. Ooh, come on. Yes. What's your name? Fred, um, um, I just wanted to know if you any plans to tour UK and Ireland. I love, your, I love your voice. <laughs> I love your voice. You know what? I, I was there this year, um, early this year, though. But I always want to go back there. So I'm, I actually asked my managers this morning, when are we going back over? So... As soon as I can come back over, I'll be there. And I had my first touring experience here was amazing. We played in 
We played in Dublin. We played in Glasgow. We played in uh, uh, London. We played in Manchester. It was amazing, and I, I am. Country. What's that? Country to country. Uh, we haven't done that yet, but yeah. you never know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Whatever somebody wants to put me on a stage over there, I'll go. I like I like to travel. That's that's what I love to do, other than singing. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Brett. How, How you doing, pal? Uh, how did you decide the track order for Glow? It's a good question. Is the the most painful experience sometimes when you're trying to do that because you know it. It's like, oh, we, we're going to hit him with this up-tempo, big swinging song, and then we're going to come back and we're going to make him cry with Silent Night. <laughs> or we're going to, like, it's like, how do we, you know, make this a telling a story um, with a record? It's always really interesting. But with this album, I just, it was, so many of these songs are such classic songs that it was, it, it was pretty hard to screw up. It was just I wanted it to flow, like, I, w I want to picture somebody sitting under their, by their tree or uh, on a long road trip driving back home to wherever they're from and I want them to never want to skip a song and I want them to feel like they just went on the most magical Christmas journey ever. So that's what Glow is, I hope. <laughs> that's what I was going for. We have uh, oh, hi, Brett. My name is Amanda. You? Hi, Amanda. Uh, my question is whether it's Glow or Bring You Back, Illinois, what was your favorite song performing thus far? Thus far to perform, um, it's tough. I I love to perform a song called "One Mississippi" of my first album. Um, I love I love to perform songs that are some some simple, like simple as in it's just me and a piano, or like for this album I did first Noel and it was just I did an acapella version, and. I just love this when a song is so powerful that you can just all it needs is a, sometimes just a voice and and so with one Mississippi or so, um, or even want to be that song too it's pretty broke down um, I just like I like the, the lyric to be out front and just I love to be able to belt out I love to be able to sing and 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 really uh, just just get it out there for everybody and, and hopefully move somebody and and inspire them because the, everybody inspires me the fact that they're sitting there in the crowd just you know, letting me sing to a piano, and that's it. That's awesome. And then one more question. Yeah, hi, I'm Tony. Hi, uh, Tony. Um, I spoke to you outside about Want to Be That Song. Yes, and how sir. It touched me to the core. Um, are you aware of, of what you do in that song? It, it, like, nobody else could have done what you do with this song. There's just something about even, like, that the sound, like the woes um, yeah. are piercing. Uh -huh. um, it's just one of the most moving songs that people actually just like, don't take it as just like simple country music, but like a very, very powerful lyric. Mm -hmm. Are you aware of what you've written? Uh, <laughs> I mean, you know, it's a, it's a crazy thing for me. I, I, when you're writing a song, you don't always know. You know when you, ha like, when I wrote this song, when we wrote this song, I knew right after we wrote it, it was like, this is something special. But, but when you go and record it and you have that magical feeling of like, something that's not even a part of you it's like bigger than you it's something that's i don't know it's so natural and it's so real and it and it just it gives me chills thinking about it because it's the coolest experience and then the best part about it is seeing how people like yourself interpret it it's like it's a certain part of the song that you might love might be and someone else might like a different part of it that's their favorite and it's like but to be able to have that that connection with someone and be able to you know like you stopped and when I was out in the street, I saw you, and you're you're telling me the meaning of that song, and that this that means the world to me, and that's why I want to write songs, and I want to touch people like you and everybody. It's like that that gives me meaning to do what I do. So I appreciate you saying that. It, um, I saw you uh, open for um, Keith Urban last yes. month at uh, at Barclays Center. Barclays, yeah. And when you did that song live, I kind of like lost it. Yeah. <laughs> the woman sitting next to me, total stranger, she's, "Are you okay?" <laughs> <laughs> And she's like digging through her bag. She's not watching you. She's digging her through her bag to give you tissues. Just like tissues. That's <laughs> awesome. Well, I appreciate that you're so moved by it, and and uh, I will. That's why I will continue to write songs and hopefully continue to to have another one of your favorites on the next album. So thank you, my friend. That's awesome, Brett. Thank you so much for stopping by. Glow is out now. Go get glow, everybody. <laughs> I love you guys. Merry Christmas.